Ellsworth area. So I'm Check just off 225, not far off the interstate. Yeah. And I have to say, not far from 136. So for folks who live in our viewing area out Ball Creek Way, it's not that far for them. Well, they have a good singing there about once a month. Oh, they have honey, big they groups come awesome. in, and uh, yeah. it's it's a good place to go visit. Yeah, yeah, nice, nice people, but but people who are hurting today, and right. uh, I think her service may be tomorrow. But um, it, it is just uh, yeah, it's tough. And and for whoever ran that intersection, be careful, people. Be careful. Don't don't change a family's life because of neglect. Now I have to tell y'all today. Today is the day we're going to do a little homework. We're going to make you pay attention. So I want you to pay attention to today. We're going to talk a lot about Memorial Day and what it's about. We're going to talk to a veteran. We're going to talk to a veteran's wife. We're going to talk to uh, Judge Harry Doss is going to do a presentation for us. And I want you to sit back and listen to everything you learned today. And then we're going to have a trivia question. And because my buddies, the Diplomats, gave us another DVD, you're going to get the Diplomats live. So just sit back, pay attention. Don't take any breaks this morning. You, go ahead, get your oatmeal down, get your coffee down, and be ready because we're going to give away. This is an awesome DVD. It was recorded live in West Virginia, and you know the diplomats. Oh, yeah. Good, good group. And, and what a wonderful message. I mean, most of their work, Jimmy writes. If you like good Southern gospel music, Honey. that's great stuff. <laughs> yes, yes. And last night, I have to tell you, we took a picture of Miss Rita with her. Um, you know, she was one of the shows we won the telly on, and and we took a picture with her and with Linda, the pastor's wife, and just a good night of fellowship. Just um, kind of reminds you why you love gospel music. It's a family. Mm -hmm. It's a family. That pastor, so. he's an older gentleman, isn't he? Uh -huh. Yeah, I've, I've Calvin, seen Calvin, he didn't mean yeah. to say you're older, sweetheart. He didn't mean well, to say that. he's older than I am. So. <laughs> he ain't a whole lot older than you are, Bill. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Calvin and Linda are watching on streaming video. Now. <laughs> I like Calvin. I've been over there. I, I know. I know he's a good, he good is, preacher. Yes, he is a very nice man, and and his wife is precious. He likes precious. going to Pigeon Forge too. I know. Well, we we all like going to Pigeon Forge, Dollywood. Speaking of, how's it going? Is Kaylee doing well? Doing well. She emailed me the other day. Said that she got to sing with Loretta Lynn on stage. And, oh uh, Lord, have mercy! Yeah. I love Loretta Lynn. Yeah, and she said. Uh, Eva May Lefevre was on park last week too, and uh, they've had a good time singing. And with we all have to say, Eva May is 91 and strong. Uh, Kaylee says she can really. Honey, still she's strong enough to hold up a full-length mink coat. That's all that matters <laughs> to me. <laughs> Kaylee says she can still flat out play the piano. So oh wow! Isn't that good, amazing? Yeah. Well, I have a picture today. I'm going to go to Mercier's <clears throat> and take Miss Adele a picture that we had made at the Nifty Fifty. She was sitting beside me, and I said, you know, she is 90 years old and 90 and going strong. That's so, great. I hope I am, too. What an awesome age. message. You do, yeah. too, I'm sure. Yeah, I hope we're sitting right here, and I hope High Def hadn't come into play yet. <laughs> well, I know a lot of people in this area go to Dollywood, and if you're up that way and you want to go see a show, uh, see a local girl making it big up there, uh, go to see the Great American Country Show inside Dollywood at the Pines Theater. And they're usually performing five, six days a week, a couple shows a day. And say hello to... Kaylee and say, I watch your daddy on Mondays and Thursdays now. Yeah. Because he's the smart one well, with the pretty blue eyes. Sometimes smart. Are Kaylee's eyes blue? Yeah. 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 She looks like that. All my daughters have blue eyes, but my son has kind of like hazel. He took after the mother. Yeah. And and Kaylee happened to take after you in singing, right? Yeah, I think they took their looks after their mother, thank God. So. Right. Well, I don't <laughs> think <clears throat> I don't think we have any obits today. Did they mention that to you? No, that's good too. Okay, and my earpiece isn't working, so you're well, going to have to run the show. We have a community calendar, though. We have what? Community calendar. We do. Let's we go do. to the community calendar, on. and when we come back, we will talk more Memorial Day. Hang on. We'll be right back.
At this time, we'd like to invite all you folks out in the viewing area to stand with us and pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Back to the real world. Back to the real world. We have so many guests here, and we're so grateful that people took time on a holiday to come and spend the time with us. That's right. And we can say, my earpiece is not working. So, Bill's going to run the show today, and I'm going to take a nap. Well, mine might not work here tonight. <laughs> we have a little shortage, and so we're going to hope that we can just, what is that called? Wing it. Wing it. Yeah. Okay, or fake it. So, today we may be faking it Are a little bit. Are you a good bit. faker? Not usually. What you see is what you get with me. I'm the real deal, and right now, <laughs> me in this court, I just ask our precious cameraman, had he ever seen a fat woman pitch a hissy fit? He said no, and I said, well, if I don't get my mic fixed soon, I'm going to have one. And I was going to tell you, if you didn't stand up on that, shame on you. Right, right. Yeah. God bless America. That's right. God bless America. We have to say happy, happy birthday to Pat Green on 526. Guess how old? I don't know, 29? 93. That's 93. Close. What a blessing. What a blessing. And happy birthday to Kayla Dobbs. Happy birthday to Sandra Jones. Happy birthday to Roy Dobbs. Happy birthday to Barry Cheshire. My goodness. A lot of birthdays. A lot huh? of birthdays. What was happening nine months ago? Cool weather, uh, not cold weather. <laughs> <laughs> we better not go there. <clears throat> A lot of folks may birthdays. So happy, happy birthday to each and every one of you. We have um, a very, very special presentation by Judge Harry Doss. And um, we went up to Fannin County, and, and I've got to say, Fannin County, way to go. The most beautiful memorial tribute to our soldiers. Unbelievable. And I have some great photography. I think the guys are going to show it. We uh, actually sent it in, but isn't that? That's, a, that's great. It is amazing. And, and this is something, I think Judge Harry said that they add to this yearly or every year or so. Amazing, amazing story. There's one name of a soldier who lost his life in Iraq. Hmm. And a um, lot of other names. And you know one that really impressed me? The Civil War, a lot of people. Yeah. World War I, a lot of names. So we're going to show those pictures. And um, I hope, I realize Adam's not here today. Chad is here. So I have Chad now in my ear. It is not Adam today. It is precious Chad Luther. <laughs> you know, today's a holiday. And not many of us are um, here. One, two, five of us out of usually 15 or yeah, so. Right. Eight. Eight. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, so, Chad, would you please so. let's share these pictures of Fannin County? And Fannin County, please be proud of yourself. This is such an amazing tribute to all the soldiers. I, I was just blown away. And, and I think this is something that maybe a um, commissioner, Judge Harry, can talk to us a little bit more about that. I think that a commissioner came up with this idea, but what a wonderful, wonderful tribute to every branch. Now, that, that's the thing that impacted me that's the most. That's pretty awesome. That was so awesome. That was so awesome. And uh, thank goodness Santa Claus brought me a good Nikon camera. I think it would be great if every county could set aside a little money and do that. Absolutely. It's almost to the point now where there's soldiers from almost every part of the oh, country. Oh, yeah. Well, Pickens County has a small one. Now, that's one of my favorite photos. Mm -hmm. I love that. But uh, Pickens County has a small one. Gilmer County has a small one. I actually went up to Copper Basin and took a picture of theirs across from ETC. I don't know if we have it downloaded or not because we are dealing with a, a small staff today, and I'm not going to drive them completely crazy doing pictures. But um, such a tribute to these men and women. Such a tribute. A, they showed a nice one down in Canton uh, last night on TV. I, uh -huh. I haven't been there. Now there's Judge Harry with the World War II. A lot of names. A lot mm -hmm. of names. But uh, I'll tell you another one, the Vietnam. Um, uh, that was an era that uh, I'd hoped to have a Vietnam vet on today, but that didn't work out. But we do have a gentleman who is, um, <clears throat> we're not going to give his age, but by George, he looks good. I don't know what war he was in. World War II, I believe. But uh, amazing, amazing stories. Yeah, I went to the wall there in Washington, Vietnam. Uh -huh. wall. It's, it's, a, it's a lot There's of names. There's nothing like it. A lot yeah. of names on yeah. there. Yeah, I lost a, a dear friend there, and uh, he'd been there. Now, look at this. Bill Dobbs. You know, my maiden name is Dobbs. I thought that was interesting. Hmm. There aren't many Dobbs in this area. But, you know, the one thing that was really interesting to me, in, in one family there might have been three or four names, like Patterson or... Um, you know, whatever, uh, Davenport. I noticed there were several Davenports on one of the monuments. Just um, families that you thought, well, were those brothers? Were those, um, 
That's, that's my favorite shot right there. That is my absolute, I love that. I think that is just phenomenal. Whoever did that, um, who, whoever planned this, um, good job, good job. And, and they do add to it. And it, it's such a statement when you pull up, you know, Judge Harry said, I want to take you and show you something. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm thinking we're going to look at a little old rock, and we get there, and I'm like blown away. I said, wow. I've passed by that place several times. I've never been in there. I should well, you should in. stop and spend some time mm -hmm. because the names. Now, look at that. God and the soldier we adore in times of danger, not before. When danger has passed and all things right, God is forgotten and the soldier denied. That is, uh, that's a pretty awesome statement. Mm -hmm. Pretty awesome statement. Well, we all know war is never pretty. It's never... Uh, I'd say good in a way because I mean you're, you do have a, a mission to accomplish, but right. there's always going to be death and destruction and right. tragedy. Well, our guest that's coming on later was Navy. My dad was Navy, and uh, I can remember how proud he was being in the Navy. And I also remember um, at his funeral looking at his Navy. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say decals, tattoos on his arms. Yeah, yeah. Now that's the Vietnam. Six skies in Vietnam. Yeah. And there's a queen, you know, you wonder if he might be related to Roger Queen. There, there are just so many stories. And, yeah. and, you know, that's something, guys, take the time to go visit this memorial. And, and there are benches there where you can sit and reflect and a nice place to read. And, and I have to say, reading, I got a gift. I got an awesome, awesome book, and it's called, oh, no, I had a brain freeze. Are you talking about the one from the lake? No, no. The one that my friend John brought me, and I swear I'm going to kick myself. Oh. It is about your life, and I'll remember it in a minute. There you go. But isn't that wonderful? I would also challenge when you go to one of these places, take some young kids with you. Right. And, and let them see what's happened and teach them a lesson. That's right. Because a lot of kids are not getting that in school, I don't think. And That's right. Nothing like going to a place like that to learn some history. That's right. And remember, guys, today is Pay Attention Day because we're going to give away the DVD and we're going to um, share this Diplomats music with you. So awesome, such great people. But you've got to pay attention because after a while I'm going to ask you a question. And I've, I've made several statements that I hope people will remember today. Well, they're going to need to know the phone number too, and that's 1-866-939-TODAY. 2329, two two so that that's down. right. And, and a, a great day to all the folks in the nursing homes. We have had so many calls. and. And I have to tell you, walking into Newtown Baptist Church last night was like old home week because everybody, we watch every day, we watch that, and I'm good, I'm excited, great, keep watching. That's part of, um, makes you feel good when you go out and people acknowledge that they waste 30 minutes or an hour of their time, that's great. Well, I so. think they need to build a Newtown Baptist in every little place around here. It's, it's yeah. an awesome place. We're going to take a break and go to the weather. So far, my hair, it's hot. It's muggy. It's humid. We don't have to go to the weather. I can just tell you what it's doing outside. And when we come back, we are going to be joined by Judge Harry Doss, who is going to give you a little insight of what Memorial Day is really all about.
Welcome back to North Georgia Now Today. Now today is a special, special day. For many of you, it's a holiday in your home. And maybe tuning into us for the first time. Can you imagine that? Well, it could happen, yeah. Well, it could happen. They've been so if, if, you're, if you're tuning in for the first time, today's a little bit of a unique show. We don't have our news crew here today. It's just, we're just faking it because it is a holiday, but it is a very important holiday. Well, we've been here since January. Where have you been? That's <laughs> right. That's right. If you haven't watched us before, shame, shame. But today, I'm, I'm very patriotic. My dad was in the Navy. Um, our family has always been patriotic, and to me, that, that's what it's all about. And going out to the monument in Fannin County with Judge Harry opened my eyes to things that, you know, it's the community giving back. And we're going to give Judge Harry an opportunity to give you back a little knowledge, a little wisdom, and a little bit of what Memorial Day is about. Sit back, relax, no breaks now, guys. You're going to enjoy his presentation and then we'll come back to us and we'll visit with a gentleman Robert Brown who knows a lot about war so hang around guys here's Judge Harry thank you very much uh, Sherry it is indeed a great honor and distinct privilege to be with you on this uh, <coughs> sacred uh, secular holiday we as Christians of course celebrate Easter and Christmas but as Americans, we have certain holidays that we celebrate, uh, Independence Day, Thanksgiving. But I think uh, the most solemn uh, celebration we have is Memorial Day. And as I said, it's, it's just a great honor to be with you and to have an uh, opportunity to say a few remarks about Memorial Day. My fellow Americans, what is the price of liberty? What is the price of freedom? These questions have resounded throughout our country for more than 200 years. Varied answers might be offered in response, but one answer above all others is true. Freedom has never been and will never be free. Each of our individual liberties and the freedoms enjoyed by this great nation has come at an extremely high price. We are all familiar with the epic story of Washington crossing the Delaware, a daring raid accomplished on Christmas Day, catching the British by surprise, and changing the course not only of the war, but also of the history of the world. Washington and Hamilton, Lafayette and Nathaniel Green are names well remembered by history. These men fought and lived to gain greater fame. Lost to history are the names of 4,435 men who died on the battlefield during the War for Independence. Had it not been for the sacrifice of these gallant men, we would not have the luxury of being here today. They paid the ultimate price for our freedom. No, freedom is not free. The War of 1812 is one of the forgotten wars of the United States. The war lasted for over two years, and while it ended much like it started in stalemate, <clears throat> it was in fact a war that once and for all confirmed American independence. The offensive actions of the United States failed in every attempt to take Canada. However, on the other hand, the British Army was successfully stopped in its attempt to take Baltimore and New Orleans. There were a number of American naval victories in which American vessels proved themselves superior to similarly sized British vessels. Yet despite our victories, the names of the 2,260 men who lost their lives on the field of battle are now just a footnote in history. Again, these men paid the ultimate price for our freedom. No, freedom is not free. This great nation was almost torn asunder by the war between the states. And here in the South, we honor the brave men and women who lost their lives in service to the South in April of each year on Confederate Memorial Day. The boys in blue recorded 140,414 battle deaths 
while the lads in gray had approximately 74,524 battle deaths. From Gettysburg to Atlanta, the blood of, Amer of America's sons and daughters shed on American soil attested that freedom is never free. Now only footnotes in history. The Mexican War fought before the war between the states and the Spanish-American War fought subsequent to the war between the states cost this great nation an additional 2,000 precious lives. World War I, which is also known as the First World War, the Great War, the War of the Nations, and the War to End All Wars, was a world conflict that occurred from 1914 to 1918. Four dynasties, the Habsburg of the Austria-Hungary Empire, the Romanovs in Russia, the Ottomans in Turkey, and the Hohenzollerns in Germany, who had roots of power dating back to the days of the Crusades, all fell during or after this war. No previous conflict had mobilized so many soldiers or involved so many in the field of battle. It was then the second bloodiest conflict of all times. Chemical weapons were used for the first time. The first mass bombardment of civilians from the sky was executed, and some of the century's first large-scale civilian massacres took place. Most of us are familiar with the poem in Flanders Field. The uh, author of this famous poem, which is closely associated with World War I, and which school children uh, formerly had to memorize. I remember memorizing it in the ninth grade under Miss Bailey, my ninth grade English teacher. Uh, is close, as I said, this poem is so closely associated not only with World War I, but also Memorial Day. This poem was composed by Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, who was a doctor who lived from 1872 to 1918. He was in the Canadian Army. Although Colonel McRae had been a doctor for years and had served in the South African War, he records that it was impossible to get used to the suffering, the screams, and the blood. At the time of penning the poem, then Major John McRae had seen and heard enough in his dressing station to last a lifetime. However, one death particularly had affected McRae. A young friend and former student, Lieutenant Alex Helmer of Ottawa, had been killed by a shell burst on the second day of May, 1915. Lieutenant Helmer was buried later that day in the little cemetery outside McRae's dressing station, and Major McRae had performed the funeral ceremony in the absence of the chaplain. The next day, Major McRae was sitting on the back of an ambulance parked near the dressing station beside a canal, just a few hundred yards north of Iper, or Ypres, in Belgium. McRae vented his anguish by composing a poem. The Major was no stranger to writing, having authored several medical texts besides dabbling in poetry. In the nearby cemetery, McRae could see the wild poppies that sprang up in the ditches in that part of Europe. And he spent 20 minutes of precious rest, rest time scribbling 15 lines of verse in a notebook. A young soldier watched him write it. Cyril Allison, a 22-year-old sergeant, was delivering mail that day when he spotted McRae. The major looked up as Allison approached, then went on writing while the sergeant stood there quietly. The sergeant later recorded, his face was very tired but calm as he wrote. Allison recalled he looked around from time to time, his eyes straying towards Helmer's grave. When McRae finished five minutes later, he took his mail from Allison and without saying a word, handed his pad to the young sergeant. Allison was moved by what he read. The poem was an exact description of the scene in front of us. He used the word blow in that line because the poppies actually were blowing that morning by a gentle east wind. It never occurred to me at that time that it would ever be published. It seemed to me just an exact description of the scene. 
In fact, it was very nearly not published. Dissatisfied with it, McCray tossed the poem away, but a fellow officer retrieved it and sent it to certain newspapers in London. The Spectator newspaper in London rejected it, but Punch, the famous newspaper, published the poem on the eighth day of December, 1915. And as in so many Memorial Day services across our country throughout history, this poem has been read and I'd like to read it for us now in Flanders Field. In Flanders Field, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, love, and were loved. And now we lie in Flanders field, fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. <clears throat> if ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Like those who sleep in Flanders fields, the 53,402 American men and women who died wearing the uniforms of our great nation would attest, freedom is not free. World War II was a global conflict that started on the seventh day of July, 1937, with the invasion by Japan of China. And it started on the first day of September, 1939, in Europe by the invasion of the Nazi hordes of Poland. It, of course, started for us in the United States of America with the dastardly surprise attack on our Pacific fleet at Pearl Harbor by the Japanese on the seventh day of December, 1941. The conflict lasted until August of 1945, involving the majority of the world's countries and every inhabited continent. It was the most extensive and expensive armed conflict in the history of the world, attributed in varying degrees to the Treaty of Versailles, the Great Depression, nationalism, fascism, militarism, the causes of the war are a matter of debate. Fighting occurred across the Atlantic Ocean, in Western and Eastern Europe, in the Mediterranean Sea, in North Africa, the Middle East, in the Pacific, and Southeast Asia, and it continued in China. In Europe, the war ended with the surrender of Nazi Germany on the eighth day of May, 1945. But the conflict continued in Asia, in the Pacific, until Japan surrendered on the decks of the battleship Missouri on the 15th day of August, 1945. As President George W. Bush noted in his remarks on the 29th day of May, 2004, that he made at the dedication of the National World War II Monument. In the history books, the Second World War can appear as a series of crises and conflicts following an inevitable course from Pearl Harbor to the coast of Normandy to the deck of the Missouri. Yet on the day the war began, and on many hard days that followed, the outcome was far from certain. At the height of the conflict, America would have ships on every ocean and armies on five continents. And on the most crucial day, would move the equivalent of a major city across the English Channel. World War II was fought and won through the efforts of some 16,112,566 men and women who donned the uniforms of our great nation. Their toils are only surpassed by the approximate 291, 557 servicemen and women who are alive on December 7th, 
1941 and dead by the end of August 1945. One day last week, my wife and I were naming the World War II veterans that we know who are still alive. The number is decreasing daily. And while this is Memorial Day, rather than Veterans Day, I want to say a special thank you for your service to a number of my friends. Mr. H. Tilley and Frank Stewart and Robert Brown and Roy Painter in Blue Ridge, and also to my father, Oliver Harris Dolphs in Brunswick, and to Quince Queen in Fanning County. President Bush noted the greatest day of the war was the sixth day of June, 1944, with the invasion of Normandy. I think it's remarkable that a small community such as Fanning County, and Blue Ridge in particular, should have three sons who were in the invasion that morning on the beaches of Normandy. Frank Stewart, H. Tilly, and Quince Queen. H. Tilly would lose an eye in the battles around the beaches of Normandy. And Frank Stewart would later be seriously wounded in the fight across France. Also, I think we, on Memorial Day, can pause and remember the sacrifices of others. I'd like to call to your attention the, the sacrifice of one of the native sons of Pickens County, Mr. Everett Mosley, now deceased. Everett was a young man who got his mother to allow him to join the Navy at 17. And he was later assigned to the destroyer, Hazelwood. The Hazelwood it was engaged in many actions in the South Pacific, including Lakey Guff. And Mr. Mosley, who is the husband of Hazel Mosley in Pickens County and the father of Miss Regina uh, Mosley Camp, was on the decks of the Fleetwood at his gun turret when a kamikaze attack off of Okinawa uh, hit his ship, blowing in him into the ocean. This kamikaze attack severely wounded Mr. Mosley, the wounds he suffered the rest of his life. The kamikaze attack also killed some 39 members of the Fleetwood, of not Fleetwood, but the Hazelwood that day, including its commanding officer. World War II every community saw the sacrifices of its sons and daughters. Our communities, as Ms. Martin, Sherry Martin has pointed out, have beautiful monuments to our war dead that are particularly remembered. And celebrations are had, or not celebrations, but memorial services are had around these memorials on Memorial Day or Memorial Day weekend. As Ms. Martin has shown you the pictures of our beautiful monument, a veterans monument, in Fanning County. On the monument to the World War II dead are the names of 55 men who gave of their lives that we might remain free. We think of Fanning County now, even now we don't think of Fanning County as a heavily populated county, but can you imagine what 55 men were to a community in the 1940s to the Fanning County community? And then on the War Memorial in Pickens County, which of course was not a largely populated county during World War II. There are the names of 34 men who gave their ultimate sacrifice during that conflict for our freedom. And of course, there are men, numerous men here in Gilmer County who gave of themselves for our freedom. Men like these and the women who serve should make us feel humble and honored that they and their fallen comrades realize the value of freedom. And knowing that freedom is never free, we're willing to pay the ultimate price. In the years following World War II, the United States would be engaged in the Cold War. During the Korean War, over 33,741 men and women would surrender their lives while wearing the uniforms of our wonderful nation. The Vietnam War took the lives of more than 47,424 service men and women who gave their lives to our nation. And I think it should be noted 
that our Veterans Administration note that an additional 42,785 uh, service deaths indirectly related to the Vietnam War are recorded for nearly 100,000 deaths in that conflict. These men and women gave their lives to a nation that was at times less than grateful. The threat that these brave men and women engaged was a challenge to those freedoms we hold dear and for those who know that freedom is never free and were willing to pay the price, we can only say thank you. Most recently, the Gulf Wars have called upon American soldiers to again answer the call to protect our freedoms. And one who does not believe that our freedoms are in danger today, I would like to pray, paraphrase the famous speech by President John F. Kennedy at the Berlin Wall. Those who, not, who do not think we are threatened today, let them come to New York and see the vacant sites where the Twin Towers once stood. As of today, some 4,000 men and women have forfeited, for, forfeited their lives in this most recent defense of our freedoms. And so, I am here before you today privileged to serve as a Superior Court Judge for Fannin, Gilmer, and Pickens Counties. My family is at home in a beautiful area of the world known as Blue Ridge, Georgia. We have the privilege of being here because of those who paid the ultimate price for freedom. As you have listened to me this morning, you have taken time from your varied and busy lives to pause and observe Memorial Day an observance that finds its roots in the aftermath of the war between the states. When on the fifth day of May, 1868, the head of an organization of Union veterans that was known as the Grand Army of the Republic established Decoration Day as a time for the nation to decorate the graves of the war dead with flowers. Major General John A. Logan declared that Decoration Day should be observed on the 30th day of May each year. It was not until after World War I, however, that the day was expanded to honor those who have died in all American wars. In 1971, Memorial Day was declared a national holiday by an act of Congress. Though it is still often called Decoration Day, it was then also placed on the last Monday in May, although we still re refer to the 30th of, of May as Memorial Day. General Logan's orders for his post to decorate graves in 1868 was with the choicest flowers of springtime, and he urged we should guard their graves with sacred vigilance. Let pleasant paths invite the coming and going of reverent visitors and fond mourners. Let no neglect, no ravages of time testify to the present or to the coming generations that we have forgotten as a people the cost of a free and undivided republic. The origin of special services to honor those who die in war can be found in antiquity. The Athenian leader Pericles offered a tribute to the fallen heroes of the Peloponnesian War over 24 centuries ago that could be applied today to the 1.1 million Americans who have died in the nation's wars. Not only are they commemorated by columns and inscriptions, Pericles wrote, but there, dwell out, but there dwells also an unwritten memorial of them, graven not on stone, but in the hearts of men. And let me just take another moment to explain the origin of the 1.1 million Americans who have died for our freedom. The Department of Veterans Affairs records that 653,708 battlefield deaths have been suffered by our nation. But the Veterans Department also records that 650,480 of service-related deaths during 
war have also occurred for a total of nearly 1.1 million. 1.1 million seems today, here in 2008, a rather abstract figure. But let me try to put it in perspective for us by remembering just one of those 1.1 million soldiers. His name was First Lieutenant Thomas Gary Sight. He was my friend and fellow Reserve Officer Training Corps, generally known as ROTC, cadet at Mercer University in the mid-1960s. Gary and myself were commissioned second lieutenants in the United States Army Reserve. Gary, after our graduation in 1966, uh, went on to serve with the act on active duty with the Army, and of course this was during Vietnam. Gary was married and had one infant son. Gary was born in Jacksonville, Florida on the second day of January, 1945, which makes him about a month younger than myself. However, Gary paid the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom, for on 20 December, 1968, he was killed in action in South Vietnam. Now let me try to put this in perspective. Gary died at the age of 23 with a widow and an infant son. He and I were the same age. Here I stand privileged to be before you today at age 63. I went on after graduation to have six children and I had the privilege of serving in such places as West Germany, Somalia, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Egypt, Jordan, and other locations. I've enjoyed my family for more than 40 years, since 1968. I've raised my children. Gary's son had to grow up without a father. His widowed mother had to raise the, his son by herself, and with the support of family, of course. Recently, I was at a little league ball game with one of my children. Gary's son did not have his father to be with him when he played little league. Yesterday, I went to church with my children and wife. And when Gary's son and his mother went to church, they had to do so without Gary, for Gary had paid the ultimate price for the freedoms that we enjoy. Yesterday, I went to a recital, a violin and piano recital for three of my children. When Gary's one son went to his recitals, he did so without his father. <laughs> Yesterday, my oldest son, who was born in Munich, Germany, when I was stationed in Germany, was with us with uh, my three grandchildren, two of two of whom were twins born in December. Excuse me. Gary, grandchildren, do not have the luxury and the privilege of knowing their grandfather and being with their grandfather to have him hug them and bounce them on his knees because he died for us. So, when we think of the 1.1 million Americans who have died during the course of the wars that have protected our freedoms and liberties, let us not just think of the 1.1 million, but the individuals that we have known, the 55 names on the stone in Blue Ridge, the 34 on the stone in Pickens County. Let us always honor them. Let us take time to remember them on this special holiday. I want you to call your attention to the fact that we do have memorial services in our three counties. And I hope you will at some point take time to take you, yourself, and your children, your grandchildren to these services that honor our dead. Now standing here today, we can recall the words of Christ 
that Christ spoke to his disciples that are recorded for us in the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And so today, we few will join with Americans across our great land in pausing to remember, to salute, and to say thank you to those brave men and women who paid for our freedom. Okay, all right. That's what Memorial Day is all about. I hope you got it, I hope you understand it. I hope you um, can reflect because every family here has been affected by uh, a military loss. And I grew up in the Vietnam War, Bill, did you? Oh yeah, just a little bit, yes. I mean, it, such, such a loss, so many families. And we're joined by a gentleman, Navy, like my dad, who um, fought, tell me about your experience. We're joined by Robert Brown. I was uh, drafted in May of 1943 and uh, I went through uh, boot camp and was assigned to, with 11 others from Fanning County, to the USS Biloxi. And uh, we served in the Pacific. Uh, the, the Biloxi was uh, credited with shooting down eight Japanese planes, sinking three Jap ships. We uh, withstood uh, about 100 uh, air attacks from Japanese planes. We crossed the equator 17 times. We crossed the international date line. And uh, uh, I, I, I enjoyed it, uh, but uh, and one time, we, in 1944, we were in a typhoon that was breaking ships in two. Hmm. And uh, the now there's uh, uh, Three of us left out of the twelve. From I Phoenix. was going to ask you how many of you are mm -hmm. gone and how many are on the memorial that I went to see the other day. Uh, none of us was Good. killed in Nobody action. Nobody was. Good. Now, uh, you see the memorial park there, and in the Fanning County, the ones that were killed, 13 of those were my personal friends. Well, when I stood there at that memorial, that was tough. It was tough. Um, because I did, my dad was Navy, but he, lucky enough to come home. He was probably about your age. I didn't even ask you your age, but um, I think Daddy would have been about 81 now. So I don't know how old you are, but but it's a whole generation of families, like Judge Harry said, who didn't have their grandfathers, didn't have their fathers. I was 18 when they hit Pearl Harbor. I'm 84. Okay, so you're a little and, bit older. Uh, um, Harry mentioned that uh, I might explain a little that you didn't about our Fanning County Memorial Right, Park. would you please? Uh, the, uh, well, to begin with, we have a, uh, the four veterans organization in Fanning, and uh, we all work together. Now, I belong to all four of them, and I belong to the Honor Guard, which does the uh, graveside services. Okay. And originally, the plot, uh, everyone has seen the pictures which were beautiful of the uh, park. And as you go in the front, it lists names of, uh, of everybody and the amount of money they donated. Uh -huh. And it, people that donated money to it, even if it was $5. You know, I didn't their, even notice that. Their name was in the, not, not, uh, not that. Okay. Uh, I'll explain that in a second. If if you gave five dollars, your name was in the local paper that, that okay. you donated that money. Businesses donated money, and a lot of them, some as much as five thousand mm -hmm. dollars, because it, it cost around two hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. The plot where it is at was actually a little swamp by the side of the road at the entrance of the Fanning County Middle School. And uh, the uh, Board of Education and the uh, county school superintendent at that time was 
very cooperative in, in letting us uh, get the property. Now, I'm not going to say who spearheaded it, but in the interest there, there is uh, names of the I ones who were mostly responsible mm -hmm. and, and names of the people that donated money. I helped get up some money. I donated money. And as you go on down, the uh, there, uh, uh, lesser people bought bricks. Mm -hmm. And there's a layer of bricks down mm -hmm. there that were $100 bricks. So it, it was just a uh, cooperative uh, uh, program by the, all the people. Mm -hmm. and, and now we have a, uh, we call it the brick building that is adjacent to that, that uh, the uh, Board of Education has gave us a 10-year lease on it for us to have all of our get-togethers in. And that, uh, what rank were you when you retired from I Navy? was a machinist mate. I was in the engine room on the cruiser. So that was a very dangerous part of that job, wasn't it? Well, <coughs> I believe that's if what Mr. Mosley was doing. Hit, it got me. Well, I think that's what Mr. Mosley was doing when he was hit. Now, I, d I didn't mention the the Biloxi uh, was uh, credited with nine major battle stars and presidential unit citation, mm -hmm. and uh, I only had seven of the battle stars, but. Uh, the, when I left the ship in Ulithi in the South Pacific, well, the next time it went out, it got hit with a kamikaze. Wow. It, it didn't do a lot of damage. It was, uh, they, uh, they were shooting at it, and they had shot the wings off and the tail off, and it came in backwards with a 500-pound bomb, and it didn't explode. Mm. Wow. How many men would be on that ship? Well, there was uh, 1,450 officers and men. There was uh, 44 of them was Marines. And uh, we had uh, two planes with catapults on them and a hangar deck. And uh, the uh, bomb, that the plane suicider that hit didn't uh, injure anybody. It, was, it came in and went into a, a storage area for uh, sugar or something. <laughs> Well, where's that ship today? Is it uh, they They uh, scrapped it in 1962. Okay. Is that unusual? Do they usually preserve the ships, or is it more common to? Well, uh, you have to look at uh, all, uh, like uh, uh, Harry was talking about, 55 killed from Fannin County. There was 55 submarines destroyed in World War II, and you can wow. imagine all of the other ships, hundreds of ships were destroyed in World War II. I have a, a brochure of it, mm -hmm. and uh, they, they just, uh, there's so many of them. Just makes you wonder how much metal is laying on the bottom of the oh, ocean. Oh, man. Well, how important is it to you to keep the memory of these men and women alive? Well, I work hard at it, I and uh, I, I wish that... Uh, the veterans would do more mm -hmm. now. We, uh, we advertise for uh, new members and uh, the others. We, we have a good attendance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if you know about it, but the, the conglomerate behind us when Judge Harry was doing his presentation is of David Collins, a local Jasper boy. Gilmer County had Noah Harris, you know. Um, each community in the Iraqi war has had one soldier in our area. There was a young man, Justin, from McKaysville, you know, who was brought back there to bury. It is important that we remember. It is so important that we remember. And in whatever way you can do it, if you donate $5, $10, if you donate some time to go spend some time with a veteran who may be in a nursing home, is that something, are they all, you know, don't you feel there's a, a forgotten element out there that we need to address? Well, we, we have about uh, in the, uh, uh, it's politically uncorrect, not correct to say nursing home. They are life care centers. Oh, oh yes, you're <laughs> right. You are right about and, that. Uh, we, uh, we, the veterans of Fanning County sponsor a Christmas dinner for the Copper Basin Life Care Center and the Blue Ridge Life Care Center. and. Uh, we have a uh, ice cream social at each nursing home once a month. 
I coordinate that. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's about, uh, usually about 30 veterans in the two uh, life care centers. Mm -hmm. And um, now do you, I saw a couple of buses or vans up there while I was taking pictures. Tell me about the vans. What are those vans used for? Uh, we have had a van for several years. Now we have two and uh, we have uh, just uh, accumulated the money and have a new one in Ohio getting the decals put on it. The uh, oldest van has got 300 and something thousand. And uh, had a lot of trips to the VA now hospital. anybody they they come from Blairsville to Blue Ridge, and uh, they meet. The two buses are parked at the Memorial Park, mm -hmm. and uh, the bus goes. Uh, and sometimes they take two buses to Decatur, and to um, uh, Oakwood at uh, at Gainesville. I go to Oakwood at Gainesville on Highway 53 over there. Have you ever been to Arlington Memorial Cemetery? No, I haven't. Bill has, and Bill told me, you emailed some pictures to the studio. I wonder if they got yeah. those. It's the, probably the most beautiful place I've been to as far as cemeteries go because uh, you just understand a little bit about the gravity of what happened over the centuries, over mm -hmm. the decades here with wars, and, uh, and the grounds are just magnificent. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not a grass. And did you tell me that every day, every moment, every hour, there are soldiers standing guard? There are uh, at the uh, Tomb of the Unknown. Uh, they're marching there 24-7, and they have a change in the guard every hour. It's mm -hmm. a, a very solemn thing to behold. Mm -hmm. It really is. Well, we had hoped to have some music for folks today. We'll have it tomorrow because Donovan Jones worked really hard yesterday. He's kind of my technical guru, and, and he, for some weird reason, our computer and his work wasn't compatible today, but they're going to work on it and get it downloaded for tomorrow because he has pictures and things like that. And, and I said, you know, if you've ever heard taps. Yeah. Well, and if you go to Washington, there's lots of different memorials. There's the Vietnam Memorial with the wall that's uh, magnificent. And then there's a Korean memorial, too, for the Korean War, and there's actually uh, bronze statues of men with his raincoats and gear because it was such a horrible place to fight, they say. And, and uh, of course, you've got the World War II memorial, which is fairly new, and it's an awesome place. It's lots of granite and marble, mm -hmm. uh, and they have a section for each war that was, I mean, each section of the area that was fought. Uh, and it's in line with the Washington Monument and the Lincoln Memorial, so you can stand right in the middle and look either way and see each one of those. It's, mm -hmm. Uh, 400,000 stars, uh, actually 4,000 stars dedicated to 400,000 people who lost their lives. And wow. It's an amazing place. Well, the, um, when Judge Harry was talking about the things he did, you, ju you just look back, so many of my friends in high school were drafted. There was a draft in place then. Now we're in all volunteer service. So it's a little bit of a different world, isn't it? Well, when they hit Pearl Harbor, I, I knew I'd had it because I had turned 18 in September and mm. they hit Pearl Harbor 7th of December. But uh, I was uh, uh, deferred for a year uh, to train girls to do my job in the plant where I worked. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, that's well, interesting. Well, what kind of plant did you work in? I worked in a hosiery mill in Blue Ridge. Okay. Van Rald hosiery mill. Well, while you guys were out there on the Pacific Ocean doing your thing with the fighting, did you understand how big all that was that you were protecting in? Well, it, you was out there, and, and for miles you could see ships, a big task force with hundreds of ships in it and uh, planes flying around. One of the uh, amusements we had in the, in the evening was seeing them try to retrieve the planes they had put off the carriers. We mm -hmm. were in a carrier task force, actually. We were uh, anti-aircraft protection for the carriers. We had 12 6-inch guns and 12 5-inch guns, and uh, uh, in the afternoons, well, quite frequently, you'd see these planes come in and bounce on the flight deck and go off the side. Mm. That's a lot of money lost right there. I had I had a, uh, a friend of mine that I went to school with that was killed. A plane hit the flight deck and missed the hook and run into the uh, superstructure where he was on a 40 millimeter mount and burned him up. Wow. Wow. 
Now, how many of your friends did you say are left now? Three or four. I know Judge Harry named three or four he knew. Oh, well, I, I know and, some more uh, 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 in Fanning County, but uh, doesn't come to mind right now. Maybe five or six left in your I had, area. Uh, I, I had a brother that was in the Army 26 years from uh, 1937. He rode horses in the cavalry in 1937. Wow. One time he rode from Fort Oglethorpe at Chattanooga down to Mississippi on a horse. Mm. Mm -mm. Boy, that's a lot of riding. Yeah. That's a lot of riding. Yeah, he, he, wa he was in the, uh, went into Germany from Normandy, but he, he was, uh, he was a battalion clerk, and he he didn't uh, go with the main battle part. He escaped to the back, mm. which made him very happy. <laughs> well, I wanted to ask you a question too. They've made a lot of movies about World War II. Uh, even John Wayne was in some of those. Does any of those movies do justice to what you guys went through? Uh, yes, I, I'd I'd say a lot of it is very realistic. Like Sands of Iwo Jima and, and uh, Midway, stuff like that. Incidentally, the Biloxi did the first bombardment of Iwo Jima preparatory for landings. Wow. Or our task force did. Wow. Hmm. Have you ever seen the movie Saving Private Ryan? No. I, I well, that's seen. the toughest movie I ever sat through in my life. As a matter of fact, I didn't sit there long. I got up and left and went to the bathroom and cried my eyes out. Yeah. Because everybody... I talked to veterans who said that was very real. That was very real. So I can't even imagine how in the world you made it. But when, when Judge Harry was talking about how many lives were lost, I know when my husband was battling cancer, many of the men who were getting chemo the same time he was had been exposed to Agent Orange. And um, many Vietnam vets. I met so many Vietnam vets in chemo rooms. And that was tough because they were that forgotten war, you know. Uh, they didn't get, except for when the POW soldiers came home. Do you remember that day when the PO, so, POW soldiers from Vietnam were released? Uh, not, not the date. I, I don't remember the date, but I remember like it was yesterday because I was sitting in my living room actually crocheting, which was what I used to do when I was bored, and, and I looked at the TV and I remember them coming off the plane and I cried uncontrollably because it was one of those things, they were gone but not forgotten. Mm -hmm. And I, I wore an MIA bracelet for many years. And one of the men that was just buried um, two and a half weeks ago, Matt Maupin, was missing for four years in Iraq, but they never gave up and they finally found his remains. So I think it's important that, um, thank goodness, the Army's still searching for the, there's only a couple more guys over there. And we have to say today, Byron Fowdy, um, our friend Matt Dobler's nephew is still missing in action in Iraq, but he's been missing one year and two weeks now. And his birthday would have been two weeks ago. So, um, but, but Matt Maupin was missing for four years and he, his body was recovered recently and his family finally got to lay him to rest. That's an important part of war to, to finalize it, isn't it? We have some uh, POW that, that were POW that uh, are in the nursing homes. Up really? There now. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, that one forgot his name. Do you <laughs> but, have uh, that same disease I have, well, <laughs> old timers? <laughs> and of course, we've got a, a presidential candidate running for president who was who, a POW. John McCain yeah. was a POW. I remember the day he came home. You mentioned a while ago uh, seeing this. I, I didn't see much fighting because I was down below the water line in the mm -hmm. engine room. But uh, the, uh, the ship that I was on, any time that we were in action, there was a person on the PA system telling you everything that was going on. Mm -hmm. mm. I mean, they didn't leave out anything either because uh, um, we, couldn't, we couldn't spread the word anyway, so mm -hmm. uh, they, they kept us informed. I did see a few dog, fight, dog fights in the air, mm -hmm. and uh, the... Uh, that there wasn't a lot in the ships. Most of them were inside the ship when the fighting was going on. You didn't, you didn't want to wander around out on the deck if you could help it. I guess not. Do you remember going to a theater in the early, late 50s when there would be things going on in the theater? Remember how they used to show the news at the theater? You yeah, know, they had short reels. news clips. 
And I can remember sitting there looking at the Pacific and the, and the ships and, and thinking, man, this is like a, a, it's almost like another world, you know, and there you were in it. So it was, I wasn't born until 62, so I don't know. This, uh, oh, this Biloxi that I was on, we did, there was a couple of hundred civilians on it for shakedown. And uh, it, they were studying it, and uh, it was in newsreels. Uh -huh. Of course, it didn't uh, specify any certain people that was on it, but uh -huh. uh, uh, they, uh, they, those newsreels, they, they, that was part of the movies back then. You know something I thought was ironic? Uncle James Harris, who was Navy like you, and about your age, we found his Navy uniform at the farm. Now, he wore a size 28, 28. That was what his Navy uniform. Now, that's a tiny little feller. Were you that tiny when you were? Well, uh, I still have uh, one of my uniforms. My granddaughter uh, won the uh, school first place. She wore my uniform to uh. one of the dress outs, you know. And, uh, uh, <laughs> She, uh, that time she weighed about 125 and it mm -hmm. fit her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so about a 28, 28, you're about Uncle James's size. That is so, that's something I guess something we, else. we just eat more these days, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Well, I hope that the guys can hear up some music. We wanted to show all the pictures of the Fannin County Memorial. Okay, each community, y'all just go ahead and show the pictures one more time. And then we're going to be joined by Miss Lucy Van Doren whose brother, Buddy Satterfield, lost his life as a young Navy man in 1953. So y'all, uh, let's, let's all enjoy these photos again. And it is a beautiful, beautiful sight. If you're in Fannin County, please take the time to go out there and sit on a bench, reflect, and, and just say thank you to these men and women who did give the ultimate sacrifice. Now, we'll be back in just a minute with Mama Lucy.
Welcome back to North Georgia Now Today. Today is Memorial Day. Today is a celebration, a celebration to honor all the fallen soldiers. I'm, I'm sharing with you a wonderful, wonderful picture of a young man at 21 who lost his life on the USS Bennington. <laughs> he was um, part of a large, large family and one of my favorite families in Pickens County, the Satterfields. Miss Lucy Satterfield Van Doren is joining us commonly known as Mama Lucy in the heart of the home. And we learned last night at church, folks remember when Mama Lucy's own heart of the home, thanks Lucy for being here. This is, um, your family did become smaller because your brother died at age 21? Yes. On the USS Bennington? Yes. Where was he when this attack happened? They were out to sea and um, <coughs> it was an attack, the boiler blew up and scalded him. Oh my gosh, the boiler blew up. Right, 27 guys lost their lives. They were all scalded by the boiler. The, really? By the so steam. they were down in the, where the inside boiler the was. ship like where right. Mr. Brown was. Right. And you know, that's something Mr. Brown forgot to tell us that on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of this week, he's going to be attending a um, <coughs> reunion. reunion for his ship, the Biloxi. I wonder how many people will be there. I don't know. I generally, they, generally these are well attended. A lot of people. Well, in Pigeon Forge, so it's close to home. That's <coughs> Excuse me. Now, Lucy, how did the news of your brother's death? He was was he the middle child? No, he's two years older than I am. And you're the baby. Right. So he, he was next to the baby. He was born in January, and um, he was killed in, in April. Twenty-one years mm -hmm. old. Mm -hmm. And he was Navy. Right. At at what point was he drafted? Uh, no, he joined. He joined. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Was he one of those little tiny guys like like Uncle Jay that went in wearing a size 28 pants? Yes, you yeah. can look at his picture. Little bitty guy. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I and used to be thin like that. He was a very <laughs> handsome man. He looks like your mom. Don't right. you think he looks yes. like your mom? Yes, he looks much like my mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, now how did that change your family? How did you handle that? Well, it was real hard because we didn't know anything about it for four days after it happened. Um, they were trying to get in touch with his wife and she had moved and they didn't have her new address and they didn't know our address for some reason. Uh -huh. And we found out it by, through the Constitution of Atlanta. Hmm. And oh that no, was hard what to a take. terrible way to find out that a family member had passed away. Yes, very bad. Oh my goodness. Now, so the Army couldn't find y'all. And, right. But they still posted names. That, that I would think that would be well, unusual. They, they found through my sister that lived in Smyrna where uh -huh. we were, and that's the way they found us. And did two people from the Navy come to your door? Uh, yes, they always do that. It was very hard because uh -huh. we didn't know why they were there, you know. Uh -huh. And you said that 27 more men that day died? There was 26 more. There was 27, including him. Uh -huh. It was a horrible thing. Wow, how long had been, he been in the Navy at that point? About a year and a half. And at, he was he was 21, what year was it? It was in 53. Uh, 1953, mm -hmm. right. when I was two years old. So mm -hmm. um, my life was beginning and his was ending. Right. Yeah. Now how many, do you have any other brothers? I know your husband was military. Yes, for 37 years I had um, two brothers, and one in the Navy and one in the Army. And I have a son, two sons. It was in one in the Marines and one in the Navy. Semper Fi, always a Marine, huh? Right. Yeah, yeah. I, we, we know several Marines. There's something about that, that Marine dress blues, nothing that looks any better than the dress blues. Now, uh, I know I bought you a couple of Air Force chairs for the holidays, and uh, we talked about the military background, and you've always been like me, so supportive. And right. no matter what's going on in our country, we do live in the greatest country in the world. True. You know, you don't have to agree with everything going on, but but if we live here, then we we trust that you will salute that flag, right, Bill? That's right. And you and I are. I, I mean, like this morning, I'm running around the studio looking for a flag, and thank goodness <laughs> for Hewitt. But um, it is one of those things. We are so pleased to live in a country that offers us the freedom to pray on national television, to do what, you know, what is, we have the freedom because of the men who gave right. their sacrifice. But you know, I'm very blessed uh, by the military. So I'm just thankful, you know, that um, they're taking care of me. Right, right, because your husband, 37 years. 37 years, Air right, Force. right. Mm -hmm. And in the Air Force, did y'all travel a lot? No, 
Doug, uh, you were very lucky. He, well, we put in to go everywhere. You know, anywhere we could go, we, you know, we asked to go, but they wouldn't let him leave because they said, we need you here. So that's where we stayed in Marietta. In Marietta. Unlike Judge Harry, who went everywhere. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You've been everywhere, so. Yes, sir. They, well, sent the re they would send the reserves to Somalia. Yeah. Have you thought about writing a book? <laughs> well, no, not really. But well, uh, I, I bet sometimes after Lynn's heard a story five or six times, she's saying, Harry, why don't you just write it down so you don't have to tell it again? <laughs> but I love hearing your stories. Well, thank I you. love it. I said, I could spend a day with you sitting out at Bob Turley's house on the dock. And i got to take you to see this house. Oh, I'd love to. And I hope the guys have Bullet got some Bob. pictures of it. Oh, Bullet Bob Charlie. He is another American institution who makes us remember why we love America. Because remember when baseball was just the sport of people and, you know, kind of like Memorial Day, there are a lot of baseball games going on. Right. A lot of activities that families will participate in, a lot of cookouts, a lot of barbecues, a lot of things. But everybody needs to reflect and everybody needs to remember why we're here and why we're fortunate enough to be here. So... Sherry, let me mention this, please. Uh, on Memorial Day, of course, we have these Memorial Day services. And let me mention this. Uh, if the Gilmer County Memorial Day service, I believe, is at 11 o'clock today uh -huh. at the Memorial Day uh, or Memorial Monument, which I'm in Gilmer County. At the roundabout. At the roundabout at 11 o'clock. And in Fannin, the Memorial Day service will be this coming Saturday at 11 o'clock at the Veterans Park, which You've shown those beautiful pictures that you took. Uh, it will be at 11 o'clock Saturday. And the uh, Memorial Day service in Pickens County will, will be at 11 o'clock uh, on Saturday uh, mm -hmm. at uh, what, what it, Sunrise Memorial Park, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at the Sunrise Memorial Park there in Jasper. So Saturday we have two memorial services in our three counties. And today at 11 o'clock we have the Gilmer County service. Mm -hmm. And if folks are in the Ducktown area, literally across the street from ETC is a beautiful um, remembrance with flags. And I stopped there one day and just took pictures long before we talked about doing this program because I just it, it made a statement to me. And I thought that's pretty awesome that the community wanted to say thank you. And uh, I have some pictures of that that we'll probably show tomorrow. And hopefully we'll have Donovan's music going tomorrow. It's one of those things we're learning about computers and we're learning that you just can't take this thing and put in this thing and push this button and make it well, work. And I don't know why. Computer genius. Not all genius, computers are the same. Not all computers are friends. No, not no, at all the same. No, they're not. They're Judge not. Harry was talking about earlier how uh, Memorial Day kind of got started off. And I, I was reading a little bit about that too, a little extra piece here, May 30th, 1868. It was talking about how it got started with the two ladies from Columbus, Mississippi, putting flowers on the graves, and mm -hmm. both Confederate and Union. And one of the ladies was quoted, war widow uh, Augusta Murdoch Sykes, she was one of the planners, she was pointed out as saying, uh, they asked them why they were doing it. She said, after all, they are, are somebody's sons. Everybody here belongs to a woman. They are somebody's mm -hmm. son. And so they wanted to recognize that. It's pretty amazing to think mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. And when you go to these uh, memorials like in Fannin County and you see the names, every one of those names mm -hmm. were somebody's son mm -hmm. and you have to stop and think individually who those people were and they meant something to somebody i was amazed was wasn't it the largest number on the confederate memorial well on the on the uh, war between the states memorial you and i counted over a hundred yeah but you know it didn't delineate of course as we know um this was a divide like the country the north georgia was divided mm -hmm. uh heavily divided uh, north and south probably more north than mm -hmm. South, wasn't a slave-based economy, so, uh, but it didn't delineate, delineate uh, which were Southerners and which were Northerners, but mm -hmm. uh, um, I, I would think, I'm, I'm surmising that uh, they were mingled, but you know, the over 100 share, I believe you counted over 100, didn't you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on the uh, um, war between the states or Civil War uh, granite monument there in Fannin, that would have been a tremendous amount of people in Fannie County. Oh, that, would yeah. have, that would have been a large part of the, right. I mean, it wasn't heavily populated in the 1860s. Right. And how many widows were left to raise children, you know, like uh, like your friend who, Gary, who died and, and left his wife with a young son. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. one of those 100. things. Yeah. yeah. I think people, too, if they're not familiar with it, if uh, you want to dig into the Civil War part of Georgia, uh, you can go from Chattanooga to Atlanta. There's a stretch, almost straight line, where you can go and there's always little stops along the way, uh -huh. Oglethorpe and Alatoona Pass and Kennesaw Mountain. And Oglethorpe is beautiful. 
you know, it's a beautiful place to go and visit and mm -hmm. reflect because yeah. it, it was a, a you know, uh, we're lucky that um, it, anything was left to remember. And, and Kennesaw, the battlefield at Kennesaw, that's something that people should enjoy doing. And that's another trip they could do close to home. You know, it's, it's 35, 40 minutes from here. Well, so. not only that, but you can stumble across, if you know some folks who have these, you can stumble across places where there's individual cemeteries. I know one in Bartow County near the Indian Mounds across the mm -hmm. river uh, in the guy's back of his woods where there's a little fenced in area with a, there's a uh, soldier buried there and two other, mm -hmm. uh, I guess they were Confederate soldiers as well buried mm -hmm. there and it's just a small little plot. You know that's something on our brother's property they have a fenced in area. We need to go out there and take some pictures. Right. Roy takes care of the cemetery and, and he said these are somebody's sons. And we don't know how old they are but old, old mm -hmm. and some barely marked graves. Right. But it's one of those things, and, and he does take care of the cemetery. So, and it's a little fenced-in area, like you say, maybe about a eighth of an acre, you know, that's fenced in with the old iron stops. Where is so, it at? In Roy's pasture. Oh, in his pasture. In his pasture. It's amazing, oh, okay. and it's one of those things, and I would bet there are Confederate soldiers buried there. Well, my dad and his brother back in the late 60s, early 70s, they had uh, some metal detectors, and they'd go out and find mini balls mm -hmm. that were shot out of guns back then, and, and my uncle, who passed away he's even he even had a collection of brass buttons that went on the uniforms mm -hmm. uh, he had it appraised over ten thousand dollars they were like 30 buttons in a case there and they, they were blown on Civil War uniforms Wow because so, wow. a lot of that still goes on a lot of oh, collectors yeah. looking for items between Chattanooga and Atlanta right right and then we know what happened to Atlanta mm, <laughs> boy wow what a destruction now judge Harry when you retired what rank were you uh, I was full colonel how many years did you give service? 31 years, one month, and 21 days. And out of any of your children or any of them involved in the military? No, no. Now, my two, uh, particularly my youngest son, Philip, uh, has expressed an interest in the uh, military. Okay. But you know, like you were saying, when I was coming up, we had the draft. Mm -hmm. And you were, it was after World War II, so everyone was expected mm -hmm. to go into the military. So from the time I was a very small boy, um, I plan to be in the military, but now with the, as you pointed out, the all-volunteer force has mm -hmm. changed our society uh, radically, so mm -hmm. people aren't expected to go into the service, and I'm not so sure that's altogether good for the l lack of the, the sense of duty and service to the country. Mm -hmm. Well, other than the Gulf Wars and the things that are going on now, uh, have you seen a little bit of a lack of interest in young people to what's happened over the, the decades? Yes. The war veterans and dead yeah. war Which Memorial is a shame. Day. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm talking about kids from the age, you know, uh, grade school age all the way up to high school. Well, I, I don't think one. I don't think they're teaching history the way we. Uh, they once don't. Did. They I, don't because I've asked those questions and I'm like, well, I learned that in the fifth grade, and I'm like, what are they teaching y'all? Because I think that's a very important I, part I, I, of I America, a, and we need to right. share that. A, a few months ago, I, I asked my son. I don't know what it was. I said, Philip. He's he's 14. I hate to admit this, I really do. I said, Philip, who was the commanding general of the Army of Northern Virginia? And he didn't have a clue. I said, Philip, how could you not know this? Aren't they teaching this at school? And apparently not. Of course, we all know it's General Lee, General Robert E. Lee. Uh, but uh, no, I don't, uh, yeah, I, I see a, a lack of interest, uh, certainly a lack of knowledge, mm -hmm. certainly a lack of, uh, I mean, I, my, my family was typical, I'm sure, like Lucy's. My grandfather, Oliver Caldwell Dawes, was in World War I. Uh -huh. he, was, uh, 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 he was on like a, uh, an oil tender in the North Atlantic with a U-boat uh, threat there. Um, my father, as I mentioned, was in World War II. He was on the ship, uh, Liberty ship, the Luna, in the South Pacific. And my, but my grandma, this is a, a good story. I, I, don't, I think I've told you this before, Sherry, but let me share this if we have a minute. My grandmother, who was a widow, um, uh, my grandfather had died right after my mother was born in, in 1920, and my grandmother never remarried. Of course, she went through the Depression. It was a struggle. But my grandmother told me that she, and I don't know why, but she had always had this desire to see Africa, to go see Africa. And she, and she told me one day I was at the post office right after uh, World War II had started, and she said, I saw a poster, and it said, join the wax, which was the Women's Army uh -huh. Corps, and see Africa. You know, used to, we had to be all you can be, used to, you know, join uh, the Army and see the right, world. Well, this right. was 
join the WACs and see Africa. And she said, I just wanted to see Africa, so I joined the WACs, and I got to Seattle. <laughs> That's not good. There's a big difference in Seattle fog in Africa. So, but Bill, do we have another birthday for today? We do. Uh, Gary Patterson, uh, age 54 today. So, that. Gary's a little bit younger than me. You bit. remind me all the time I'm the old one. <laughs> so. He mentioned, he mentioned uh, General Lee, uh, Arlington National Cemetery, from what I understand when we went there, one of the first buildings you see when you get there is a home place sitting on the hill. And that used to be General Lee's home. Mm -hmm. And they said they started that cemetery in spite of him. They started burying Union soldiers oh, in wow. his front yard. Oh, wow. And so he wouldn't come back. And so they basically just ran him out when the war was over. And he never did come back. Of course, some of his kids, I think, took over the home at one time. And then it was made okay. into a hospital and so forth. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, it's a gorgeous place, and that, you know, despite well, what happened. But, well, the, the Union general that was the quartermaster general of the Army of MIGS, M-E-I-G-S, um, you know, General Lee, uh, President Lincoln, uh, kind of a small world story, had sent later General George Meade, who was commanding officer of the Union Army of the Potomac at Gettysburg, over to the Curtis Lee Mansion and offered General Lee the command of the Union Army. <laughs> and General Lee, as the story, uh, all night long paced in his bedroom, and his daughters could hear him pacing up and down. And, and he finally, in the morning, wee hours of the morning, he resigned his commission and he left his home, never to return, as you said, left his home. He, he left for Richmond and his wife and children left a few days later, mm -hmm. never returned. But he, he said he could not draw his sword uh, against his native state. But, uh, and, and, and many people understood that, but the Union General, a guy named Miggs, who's buried at Arlington, um, lost the son. I don't know where, what battle he lost his son. He became very embittered, uh, but I think he held General Lee personally accountable. So uh, with the deaths around Washington at Manassas and others, Chantilly, um, Meigs was given the responsibility of establishing a cemetery. So to spite General Lee and to ensure, like you said, that he could not return, uh -huh. he started having the Union soldiers buried in General Lee's front yard. Mm -hmm. It was wow. just a matter of vengeance. Uh, uh, for you know, that time. What amazed me at that place, when we were standing there, you, in his front yard, right, of course, Kennedy and, and Jacqueline are buried right there, too. Mm -hmm. You can turn right around where, where they're buried and look and see downtown Washington. Isn't that but amazing? But you're standing in Virginia across the mm -hmm. Potomac. Right. So, geographically speaking, you're not in Washington, you're in Virginia. Well, I learned that in the trucking business because we would, you know, the drivers would go up and they'd go to Manassas or they would go to Baltimore and I'd say, well, where do you want me to load you back out of? And they'd say, anything but D.C. And I'd say, why do you think I'd send you to D.C.? Well, I looked at a map, my goodness, you're right on top of D.C. So D.C. is like the ultimate trucking nightmare. You don't want to go to D.C. in a tractor and truck. Well, if you want a good trivia question, we, you shouldn't ask it about the DVD here, but ask a kid today, what state is Washington, D.C. in? And they won't know. And they'll know. sit there and try to they think. Won't, they went to school with Harry, son, They're not, It's not they in They won't state. know. <laughs> it's not in state. Now, we are going to ask a trivia question, and the trivia question is, our guest, Mr. Robert Brown, was in a certain um, armed force, and Lucy's brother, Buddy Satterfield, who lost his life, was in a certain armed force, and my dad was. If you know which armed forces, whether it be Marine, Air Force, whatever, is first caller, 866-939-2329. If you've been paying attention, you know when we buried my daddy, he still had his tattoo, or as I would call it, <laughs> what did I say about it? It was a, a decal. Or decal. <laughs> <laughs> daddy still had his tattoo when we buried him. So, if you know the the armed force that they were in, Buddy Satterfield, or my dad, or Robert Brown, it that might picture, have been. That picture kind of gives it away. Yes, it was. Know. Did somebody call in and know? Our Judge Duff. It was the Navy. It was the Navy. And Judge Doss was in the Army, right? Well, yes, but my father was in the Navy in World was War II. He? My grandfather was in the Navy. Did they put so many of them in the Navy because of the Pacific Fleet they needed to? No, they, uh, my, now my father joined. Uh, like, okay. I'm kind of like uh, Robert. Uh, uh, my father joined uh, right after Pearl Harbor. Uh, he had graduated from high school and was working, but he joined a few days after Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, so, and, and he joined the Navy. Mm -hmm. He wanted to be in the Navy. Um, and in fact, he, he was kind of—he has a story kind of like my grandmother. He wanted to you know, join the Navy and be in the 
uh, intercoastal waterway uh -huh. patrol, uh -huh. patrolling the intercoastal waterway that, that goes up and down the east coast, uh -huh. like, you know, between St. Simons and the mainland, for instance. And he did that for about a year, but then he likes to say, but I did not realize the intercoastal waterway of the United States extended all the way to the Philippines. Okay, Debbie Gibbs from Blue Ridge has won the Diplomat DVD, and I promise you it is one of your best evenings of entertainment ever. And this DVD, we will be actually showing this concert on ETC in the near future. It is an awesome, awesome concert film live in West Virginia. And on this, I might say that my precious little, does she sing my song, God Walks the Dark Hills? No, it's not on this one, but The Holy Hills, which is right. one of your favorites. Right. Lucy, we listened to this on the way home last night, and you said that was one of your favorite songs. You'll get to hear that. Judge Harry, thank you for doing this for me. This was your idea, actually. He called me and said, hey, Sherry, meet me for lunch. I've got an idea for a show. <laughs> And I said, thank goodness I have friends who come up with ideas. And, and I, I think it was Donovan. more, I think it was my wife. Okay, <laughs> my well, wife thanks Lynn. to Lynn. But, but, but Donovan did work on this music we're going to share tomorrow because, uh, and your pictures hopefully of Arlington will get up tomorrow because it's one of those things. I've never been to D.C. Mother went quite often. I've never been there. I don't, I can't even imagine the concept of what it would feel like. Well, one of the things that moved me too, we were, we had just saw the changing of the guard and the, uh, the guys who guard the Tomb of the Unknown, mm -hmm. and we heard taps playing off in the distance, oh. off to the right. So I walked around the corner and looked, and there was a bus. They had just unloaded the Army guys, and they were in full uniform, and they were burying some poor guy who had just been killed in action. Mm -hmm. And I was told that they bury as many as, on the average, of 35 people a day at Arlington National Cemetery. Wow. And they've just now opened up a new section to uh, bury more people from the current war. So Robert E. Lee had a big yard. It was a big plantation. It, and it, it really went all the way back to George Washington. And wow. Curtis, it uh, just covers and mountains. It was, it was just started. Rolling hills. Mm -hmm. How many Rolling people hills. are buried there? I don't know. It's a, uh, I don't remember. But they told me, but I don't remember. It's just too many to count. But Sherry, thank you for letting let me express my sincere appreciation great, for your allowing idea. us to come. And and I gotta privilege. tell this, I gotta tell this on Judge Harry, who's who's a, he's he's a tiny, tiny, still a tiny bit overweight, but not much, not like me. We were having lunch right around the corner <laughs> from this monument, and he's so funny. I said, Well, Harry, where are we going? And he said, Well, we could walk there, but we'll drive. Well, let me tell you something. I'm glad we didn't walk because it was hot Friday. It was hot, and we, and we it, it's just, if you go to Lance Trucking in LJ mm -hmm. and hang a left, Blue Ridge. I mean, that's in Blue Ridge, little, duh, ride, yeah. and hang a left, and then it's right there on the right, right before the school, and it is something, if you have not visited, it's only about I a was mile, amazed. Mile and a half. Yeah, yeah the, vet, the veterans yeah. organizations have done just a terrific amazing. job. You know, amazing. American Legion, the VFW, they've just done a Herculean job, but we should also be very grateful for those members. They're the ones who had the idea uh -huh. and raised the funds, got the plans, and did it. It took a lot of work, a lot of it, but a lot of vision. And I think all of us should be very appreciative. And it to started those with one. Was it one big monument to begin with, and then you just kept adding to it? No, they actually, Sherry, uh, and I'm, I may stand corrected. The, the it started with the monuments that have the names. Mm -hmm. uh, carved in them of each mm -hmm. war, starting with the war between the states or Civil War, uh, World War One, World War Two, Korea, Vietnam, and now the Persian Gulf War mm -hmm. uh, and Iraq. Uh, well, not not Persian Gulf War. We didn't lose anyone in Persian Gulf, but Iraq. Uh, mm -hmm. Those monuments, well, obviously not Iraq, but the World War One, World War Two, Civil War. Those were the first. You know that circle mm -hmm. there with the flags right, and right. the walkway. Um, but like the, the monument in the center, the monument to the uh, POWs and the MIA, a missing in action, mm -hmm. those have been added later. Do we know how many men are still missing in action? No. no From Vietnam, Well, for we instance. do. I don't know all okay. the Okay. Because I told you the story about Ross Perot when he and uh, Congress Landerman came to Woodbridge to eat, and I knew who Ross Perot was, and everybody's like, how do you know who Ross Perot is? I said, Lord have mercy, I'm, you know. I was a Vietnam era kid. I grew up in that. My friends I went to school with went to Vietnam, lost many friends there. The MIAs were kind of forgotten, and I love that saying, gone but not forgotten, and, and so many of them, um, a lot of people that didn't ever come home. You, um, 
You, you need to go to Washington and see Arlington, great tomb of the unknown soldier. Right. Right. But the, what, is, what is difficult to handle is the Vietnam, what I find difficult, and I think mm -hmm. nearly everyone that I've ever talked, the Vietnam War Memorial mm -hmm. uh, that has yeah. the names mm -hmm. of uh, everyone. I have the piece of very, paper very with, with somebody's name scratched well, into it that I dated yeah. that died in Vietnam. I promise so. you something, you won't be able to handle it. You know? I, I know. You won't. I mean, I, I, I just, I know. I'm and, a grown man, I couldn't handle it. I, yeah. yeah I, I, I've been many times, I, when, it, when I was in the Army, I used to go to Washington about once a month. Mm -hmm. And uh, not every time, but I tried to go by the Vietnam uh, Memorial as many mm -hmm. times as possible. It was always uh, uh, very uh, teary uh, mm -hmm. trip. You couldn't, well, you couldn't go without being I emotional. have a friend who worked for Reagan, and she has something in a safe deposit box we need to go to Washington, D.C. and get. So, Jen, if you're watching today, we're going to go to D.C. I'm going to see the memorial, and I'll probably scrawl my eyes out. But, um, you know, the Reaganomics, that period of time, wasn't it a wonderful time in our country? Wasn't it a wonderful time in our country? And I said, Patriotic. I want her to come on and share her story. She has a handwritten oh. letter that Nancy Reagan wrote her when her husband passed away. And I said, you know, there are so many people in this community who have stories, and, and they may have started long away from here, you know, from LJ to Washington, D.C. is a long mm -hmm. trip. It's a long trip, but um, there's so many wonderful things that are happening in our community because of growth. And we're bringing new people in every day and so many wonderful stories, and some of the people that I've met, I get tickled because they don't all sound like me. Some of them sound like they came from New York City, for goodness sake bodyguard <laughs> perfect example but it is so funny we just all kind of melted together here right. and it's a wonderful place to land and to live isn't it and it's and wonderful. if you if what is that saying i'm not southern but i got here as fast as i could right. yeah yeah this is such a wonderful place to melt together with people and to and to learn about families and and i know lucy this Losing your brother was a big impact how old were you when he died about 19? i'm two two years younger he is. so you're about 19, 19. Mm -hmm. yeah that, that's something tough to handle, but um, I, I knew you were proud of him and proud of the service he gave his country. Right. And, um, and you know, it was kind of sad he There's died some. in an accident. There you go. There's some of my crew up there. We do have there. some. Cool. Yeah, that's uh, three of my, we took three of the kids. Kaylee was at work. She couldn't go, but uh, this was uh, the day after Christmas of 06. Was it we, cold there that day? It was pretty cold, yeah. We showed up that evening. We had driven in from Charlotte. And this is now, the, is this is Korean War okay. Memorial. Uh, it's kind of eerie when you walk in there. You see these Man. soldiers standing there in the bronze mm -hmm. figures, and uh, it's not a very big memorial. It's right next to the Vietnam Memorial, uh -huh. and uh, most of those are pretty close together, actually. It's, it's really right in front of the, the oh Lincoln my Memorial. Goodness. I was standing, oh. I was standing at the top steps there at the Lincoln oh Lamont, uh, Memorial and took that picture. Donovan, step over here so you can see this, sugar. Look at this. Uh, that's we a, need to give Donovan these and let him do something else with this. That is absolutely gorgeous. Sure, anybody that's an American that loves America yeah, needs to go to Washington and spend a few days that and, is and just see all you, you can see. From the, uh, Lincoln uh, Memorial there. Wow. It's all in line, too, on the very other end of that monument. On the other end is the U.S. Capitol. Isn't that amazing? Amazing place. And did you did you see the World War II uh, monument? Yes, I did. It, it's a, I got some pictures of that on here. It, it, it's breathtaking. The granite monument. Uh, Donovan, what's that man's name right there, Sugar? <laughs> I <Yeah>. ran like him. <laughs> Yay! Now they say they say uh, some of this marble they use there is from Pickens County. Yeah, absolutely, it is. Georgia, Marble. Yes, yeah. Georgia, Georgia Marble. Yes, it's Georgia Marble. Georgia Marble is very yeah. proud to have a lot of things in Washington done that came right from Nelson and Tate, Georgia, and Marble Hill, Georgia. What I like about that place is you whip out your penny and look at it, and there you are. This is the World War II memorial. Wow. Uh, Lots of water fountains, lots of statues. If you look around behind us there, there's a lot of uh, statues for the states that were represented in the Now, were your battles. children in all of this? Or? They were only because of the age they are at. Uh, uh -huh. if, I, if I took them when they were six or seven, they wouldn't even understood it really. But right. They were already in high school, and uh, they really, right. really enjoyed and, it. And Jordan is the age that he does understand if there were a draft, he could be involved right. in a draft now. Right. So. Uh, but man, that, uh, if you watched the uh, procession when they brought Gerald Ford through, they stopped at this uh, memorial here and uh -huh. paused for just a moment. Mm. Uh -huh. And in, inside the monument there, there's a lot of carvings talking about certain types of, uh, or certain places where they had the wars and the Pacific, uh, the Pacific Rim and uh, quotes from the president at the uh -huh. time. And, uh -huh. and there's a lot of good things there to see. Well, you know, everybody knows that NASCAR is my favorite weekend thing. 
and I love the NASCAR commercials. And last night I was sitting there watching the NASCAR race and my favorite commercial was the one with the soldiers coming home. And Lucy and I know this, it happened to us when we were flying in from Anchorage. We backed up and as soldiers approached, we applauded them mm -hmm. and, and we cried and we cried and we cried. And last night at the NASCAR race, that commercial, I stopped and cried. This was, a, this was a favorite of mine. It was just about to get dark and they, they light the place up and there's the Washington Monument in the background. That is absolutely incredible. But like I said, these are all right near one another, all within walking distance. Now what are these columns? Uh, what do the, they represent? They're representing uh, states, that uh, the United States, and, and also the other places in there are talking about, like I said, the uh, Pacific Rim and all that, but those were for states. Mm -hmm. okay. Beautiful. You notice that in the background it says Battle of Midway, June 4th through whatever that is, 1942, and it, it, there's an inscription there too. Absolutely. Pearl, Pearl Harbor is represented there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, Saving Private Ryan is one of those movies I don't care, and Patton, I, you know, I cry every time I watch them. But it is, uh, I think they were very close to accurate. That is beautiful. That uh, monument was Good suddenly... photography, young man. And when you walk into the place, there's four ways to walk in, the Atlantic, Pacific, and uh, I forget the other two areas, but uh, there's four entrances to the place. Yeah. But I think they only built this one, uh, now this was 06, and it was only built just a few years it was, ago. It was dedicated on May 29, 2004. Okay, I knew it wasn't very long. This is uh, President, <coughs> President Kennedy's uh, place at Arlington. Really? Yeah. It has the flame. Still the flame's the still flame going, going, yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Just okay. at the top of that picture is, was the flame in the, oh, US, the U.S. Capitol Did building. Did you get to go up in the building that you can go up? I forgot the name of it. You can, you know, you have to walk up at... The, monu the Washington Monument? The now, Monument. There's a line Monument. a mile long. I couldn't wow. get in there. Now, we stood in line forever. And we just it's almost a day. It's almost right. half a Isn't day. Yeah. Two-thirds so of a day. Mm -hmm. When we were here at the uh, U.S. Capitol, there were people there. Oh, how beautiful! With uh, guns, they were packing big time. Really? Yeah. This that was is a, so beautiful. This was the day or two after Christmas, so all the the decorations for Christmas were up. The trees were decorated. Speaking of packing guns, we've got to say my bodyguard carries a bottle of Dasani water. <laughs> 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 what a wonderful tribute to a wonderful country and to so many wonderful people who gave the ultimate sacrifice. Now, could I say something? Yes, yes. I'd just like to thank my sweetheart here, but most of all, I'd like to thank his wife. She is one good lady behind one good man. That's right, that's she right. She is that's such right. a wonderful person to that's take right. care of him the way she does. That's <laughs> right, that's right. Thank behind you. every great man is a better woman. Amen. <laughs> we know that, don't we, Bill? Amen. You know, oh, yeah. th this today is a day that we should all reflect and we should all say thank you. And if you know a veteran, thank them. If you um, have an opportunity, go by Pickens, Gilmer, Fannin, go to Ducktown. There, Copper Hill, McCaysville has a tribute to their fallen soldiers. Mm -hmm. There are so many people who we don't realize. Families were affected, brothers fighting together who might have lo both lost their lives. So many things that we need to be grateful for. Well, and just say thank you. One, one thing that I remember when I was a young attorney, I did a will for an older lady, and um, she was... Um, her name was McVeigh, long deceased now, but she had lost her only son in World War II. Uh -huh. And so, now the, the uh, Army had, had taken care of her. Uh -huh. she, she got a, a small pension as being the uh -huh. survivor. But, um, you know, it's sad to think there was no one, there was no child uh -huh. to look after this mother uh -huh. in her old age. Right. Uh, because he had given his life right. in World War II. And she still had his picture and she showed me his uniform mm -hmm. that she had. Uh, well, it's very Rick's, moving. Rick and Lucy Harris are a perfect example. One child, Noah, who wasn't just an average child, right. who excelled in everything he did. He gave his life. He, it wasn't a drafted situation. He wasn't forced to go. He went to college. He excelled in everything he ever did. And then he chose to go to Iraq. Now such a story and and noah harris's story should be in book form in movie form everybody in america should watch this child grow up in gilmer county georgia mm -hmm. and excel at everything he excelled at and then he chose to join the 
military. Well, I'm eating at a local restaurant in Jasper, and I'm sitting there, and I look on the wall, and there's a picture of some Georgia Bulldogs uh, cheerleaders and athletes, and there he is. He's standing mm -hmm. right there on the mm -hmm. wall. Mm -hmm. And he could have done anything he wanted to, but he Absolutely. went and fought for this country. Yeah, he could have been a, a senator because he was the kind of man who excelled at everything he did. And instead of taking an easy road out, he wanted to make a difference. And I, and I think just like with his Beanie Baby program of approaching the children and making a difference, um, we are very fortunate to have a military that's made up of people who want to make a difference and, and, and by choice now. So, um, but Noah's one of those, he, he was the, their only child, their only child. And um, I, I think about them a lot. And I, and I think about what an amazing family they must have been. You have to look at the parents to see the child. And, and these parents had to have been wonderful, wonderful people. Well, it's like the story you told. And I appreciate people who have given their, their life and service for us because I wouldn't be able to enjoy being here or enjoying the Christmases I've had with my kids and growing up and raising kids. And, and when you stop and think about that as an adult, you have to appreciate what people have done in the past mm -hmm. to give their life mm -hmm. and service. Right. Not only the ones who have died, but the ones who have served and came back home. Oh, it's yeah. all the yeah. same when you're serving. You know. And has all the disabilities to right. handle. Mm -hmm. exactly. And I have to say good day to Donald Goode because let me tell you about something. He, he is wonderful family. When we were doing the ribbons for Noah, he walked in and he said, I, I don't even remember how much he gave me, but it made such an impact on me. I had donated the ribbon, we had everybody donated labor, we were making bows, and he said, I can't do anything except help pay for the ribbon, what can, and he, he handed me, I don't even remember if it was $50 or $5,000, but it was, a, uh, to me it was a lot of money, and I just thought, this is a Vietnam vet sitting at home watching the coverage we were getting on TV, and he wanted to make a difference. He was home, he was a Vietnam vet, he goes to the veterans hospital all the time, he has all kinds of medical issues, but once again, those special people in our community, he stepped up to the plate. And, and I said, how awesome is that? That we live in a country, in a, a city, in a town, in a tri-county area where people continue to give back. And that's what it's all about. Well, that's let's not forget, about. we are still at war. We, are still we still at have war. guys over there, and let's not forget them. And mm, if you are point. in an airport, now, let me tell you, you know, right. I don't know of a moment in my life, and I'm going to cry, that made a bigger impression on me because these soldiers were young women, young men. Oh, yeah. And I just, and we stopped and we applauded them. And sure. I said, that commercial last night, I don't know who wrote that commercial, but he's a genius. He's a yeah. genius because that was the commercial out of all the commercials at NASCAR. That one kicked me in the tail, so. Well, I think it's sad that it takes a, a soldier getting killed and coming back and us getting all worked up, patriotic-like to remember those people. Let's do it every day. Every Let's day. Not forget. Every day. Yeah. Every day. Now, Bill, you're going to have to do your thing because my eye makeup's all over my face. <laughs> well, mine's running too. Oh, uh, lordy me. <laughs> well, it, today uh, has been a wonderful day. Tomorrow will be better because we'll have Donovan's music. He worked hard to get this ready for us, and it just, it, his computer and my computer don't want to date. I don't know what's wrong. One may be from Pickens, one from Gilmer. You know, you can't ever, I bet that's what it is, Donovan. <laughs> it's a Pickens Gilmer situation. <laughs> But I have to say thank you for tuning in today. If today's your first day with us, tomorrow will be a different day. We'll have a little more crew on staff, and uh, we'll continue to uh, welcome you into our homes, and we'll come into your home. This is this is our home, isn't it? It yeah, is. Yeah, it seems to be Monday through Friday it is. Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 10.30 a.m., 6 to 8 p.m., and again, 11.30 to 1.30 for you late-nighters. From North Georgia now today, I'm Sherry Martin. And I'm Bill Senior. Have a great day today, and don't forget those veterans. That's right. God bless America.